Olga is pregnant. Like most women in Africa, she prefers not to talk about it. Olga nani? Chitupa. Okay. When, when is your baby going to be born? How soon? to you to The birth will almost certainly happen in her village, in rural Tanzania, and likely with no healthcare professional there to assist the event. If her baby dies, Olga will certainly grieve. But when infant mortality is high, it's just not worth getting your hopes up beforehand. If a child dies, it will have no name, no record of birth, no record of death, and certainly no indication of what caused the death. This is a dilemma for developing countries trying to plan effective programs. We lack vital registration system in most of Tanzania, so it's difficult to get accurate data from any other source. What uh, they are lacking is what we call population-based data. That's what they are lacking. And, uh, and in this case, what they are also lacking is the most current population-based data. For most countries in Africa, where rural people have no addresses, where there are no maps showing where the villages are, keeping valid population data is very difficult. For the Tanzania Essential Health Interventions Project, or THIP, the answer was to build a census system in the areas in which detailed studies were to be conducted. It's called the DSS, or Demographic Surveillance System. It will record Olga's pregnancy and those of all the other families in the area, no matter what the outcome. Currently, our database stands at uh, around 85,000 people, and these are in about 20,000 households. And we are doing the survey in rounds, and we have three rounds a year, and one round has got four months. So. We visit the household three times a year. All this data collection is neither easy nor inexpensive. It starts with bicycles and ends with computers. Trained interviewers set out every day to meet the families they have to talk to. One is to provide information that can be used by the district health management teams or DHMTs in their plans and the other one is to measure the burden of disease and we think also we can be able to address uh, interventions to make a sort of an evaluation of interventions that are carried out in the district by measuring this. Burden of disease is a technical measurement that allows THIP researchers to determine the overall effectiveness of the health system and to monitor the status of the population. It takes into account the impact of premature death or loss of productivity due to illness, showing clearly which health problems need the most attention. It also gives local officials vital information about the health needs of the population, which they can match to measures likely to have the greatest impact for the least cost. For example, in the study areas, THIP found that malaria in children and other factors such as gastrointestinal infections in children were the most serious problems. In the computer room at the Rufiji DSS, the data from thousands of questionnaires is carefully transferred from paper to computer, where it can be analyzed. Some of the results have been surprising, but have pointed the way to better healthcare approaches. Although malaria is well known to be the number one health problem at health facilities, what was happening was that those with severe malaria were not coming to health facilities and it's severe malaria that kills. What we found was that uh, those who did come, half, half of those who died with malaria did come to health facilities, but they still died. So this said two things. One, prevention at the household level was much more important than previously understood. And two, we had to improve case management at the health facility level. The evidence was clear, and the tool for collecting and analyzing the evidence proved its worth. And in the study areas, district health officials were able to use the information to plan and budget health care services more strategically. 
Now many countries in Africa and elsewhere in the developing world are establishing similar cost-effective surveillance systems in order to get detailed pictures of the health and economic status of their populations. The detailed data from small sentinel areas can often be generalized to large areas of the population. This is the information governments, without the resources to do nationwide censuses and donors trying to invest in development effectively, can really use.